Hi, my name is Michaela Dorf, and I'm a Senior Environmental Studies major at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For this community engagement project for Environmental Studies 319, I worked with Carolyn Butler of High Level Happiness to help obtain fundraising and background research for the Pay It Forward Tree BNB. The basis of this project surrounds the topics of environmental justice and the importance of immersive nature experiences. Currently, there is a huge problem in the world. In America specifically, people are spending increasingly more time inside each year. Studies show that the average American spends 93% of their life indoors, which, using the average American lifespan of 78.6 years, averages to 73.1 years of life spent inside. Clearly, this is a lot of time spent inside and explains why people aren't connecting with nature and reaping the benefits of nature, nature immersion. This shift indoors has occurred for a number of reasons. Primarily, many Americans wish that they could spend more time outside, but work responsibilities and lack of time prevent them from fulfilling these desires, according to a study from NPR News. This study also found that after a lack of time, health reasons and disabilities are the next most common reason that people are staying indoors. A lot of this problem begins in childhood, as kids are increasingly spending more time indoors and with technology. A 2009 study from the Children and Nature Network found that 70% of adults experienced most of their adventurous play in natural environments when they were children, where only 29% of children today experience most of their adventurous play in natural environments. What this means is that children are staying inside, having their adventurous play on apps or with technology, and aren't being creative outdoors like kids used to. Children turning indoors is creating a generation of adults that stay indoors, further contributing to the problem. Finally, many people stay indoors simply due to a lack of access to adequate nature experiences. This is especially the case for minorities and low-income groups who find themselves with a significant lack of nature immersion experiences. According to one study from Natural England, just 56% of under 16-year-olds from Black, Asian, and minority households visited the natural environment at least once a week, compared to 74% from white households. Clearly, lack of access is preventing a lot of people from spending time outside, and that's a problem that easily can be remedied. So why is there such an unequal access to nature for low-income groups and minorities? The reasons for this unequal access vary. Firstly, there are simply not as many parks in low-income areas, and those that do exist are often run down and unsafe for children to play in. These parks were probably built when these neighborhoods were built, and the low-income and minority neighborhoods and cities tend to be the older neighborhoods, and those parks likely haven't been kept up since they were built. The 2017 Nature of America study found that parents of minority children reported that there were fewer parks nearby compared with parents of white children. Parks are especially important in these low-income areas, as crime and accident rates are often higher, possibly leading parents to be more hesitant about letting their children play outside in the front yard or with their friends. Parents need to feel comfortable about spending their, sending their children outside, and there simply aren't enough areas where they can do so in these neighborhoods, and thus they're much more likely just to sit their children down in front of the TV or with the iPad rather than encouraging them to play outside. Another barrier to minorities experiencing nature is the residual effects from the times of segregation, when African Americans simply were not allowed to be in recreational areas. It really wasn't an option for them to go to parks, especially not where there were white people present. After years of such exclusion, it's simply not a part of black culture to explore and to enjoy nature, because for those years of segregation, they would have rather just stayed inside and not dealt with the racism. One researcher found that only 1.7% of yearly visitors to a Texas state park were African American, while less than 2% of visitors to national parks were African American. Among reasons relating to racism and residual segregation, this researcher, researcher Kang J. Jerry Lee, found that there are other barriers to getting to state and national parks. These include additional costs, such as parking passes and admission fees that they might not have money for. Um, no access to transportation to get there, as a lot of these parks are out of the way in nature and not easily accessible by public transportation, and a lack of multilingual programming, specifically when it comes to Hispanic and Asian families. There often aren't programs in those languages at state and national parks, and so these people just feel like there isn't anything there for them.
and don't bother making an effort to go. So not only are people not forming connections with nature, but they are also missing out on its numerous health benefits. One study found that when spending time outside, the brain's frontal lobe deactivates a little and alpha waves grow stronger. The deactivation of the frontal lobe suggests a lowering stress level and increased ability to relax simply by being in nature. Further contributing to this relaxation, to this reduction in stress, time spent in green spaces can reduce diastolic blood pressure, reduce heart rate, and lead to lower concentrations of cortisol. All of these factors contribute to lowered stress levels. What's more, a 2018 report explained that exposure to green space reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, premature death, preterm birth, stress, and high blood pressure. So very seriously, spending time outside can increase the length of your life and is something that much more people should be doing. Along with all of these physical benefits and decreased stress levels, being outside also has more mental and emotional benefits. One study found that kids who spent significant time in nature had improved social skills, including higher self-esteem and a better self-concept. A lot of people also report that when being outside, their worries and stresses seem to melt away, as all they have to focus on is nature. Further, nature immersion can also improve relationships and increase feelings of happiness. Clearly, this is something that has innumerable benefits and that people should be taking advantage of in order to become happier and healthier. So as many people have pointed out, how can a child be expected to envision a world in which people work with nature if they've never had the chance to get to know their own natural environment? If we want to help protect the planet, we need people to be connecting with nature. It is imperative that people connect with nature so that they are inspired to protect it. Thus, one solution to this problem is to create more immersive nature experiences, which are areas where people can go to interact with true nature. Green grass parks are actually not true nature and do not reap the same benefits. People need to interact with the true biodiversity of the area in order to foster a true connection with it. In this increasingly urbanized world, fewer and fewer opportunities exist for experiencing nature like this, as these places are bulldozed or people move into deeper and deeper into the cities. The United Nations predicts that by 2050, 68% of the world's population is projected to live in urban areas. Thus, it is critical that we bring these immersive nature experiences into cities so that people, so that it's convenient and that people have access to them. This is where High Level Happiness comes in. High Level Happiness is a nonprofit organization in Lincoln, Nebraska. High Level Happiness has discovered that 65% of Nebraskans live in urban areas, yet city dwellers lack access to opportunities for immersion in nature. That means that we don't have enough parks, we don't have enough areas outside that have the true biodiversity of Nebraska. Thus, High Level Happiness is working on increasing nature immersion throughout Lincoln with the development of a large exploratory treehouse center and a number of hands-on events that they host throughout the community. This latest project that they're working on is the construction of a tree BNB to be used like an Airbnb for overnight stays in Lincoln. The treehouse will utilize a pay-it-forward model in which lodgers will pay for one night for themselves and one night for someone in the community who has been underserved. The treehouse will be constructed at 1247 South 11th Street, right in the heart of downtown Lincoln, in a neighborhood that is struggling but attempting to lift its residents up. The strategic location will make the treehouse more accessible and bring an opportunity for nature immersion to those Lincolnites that have been traditionally underserved and might not have as many of these opportunities. This treehouse will utilize native plants, shrubs, and trees, and will use entirely clean energy. This is a very important distinction, as in order to really satisfy people's needs for nature, they must really be able to escape and get a glimpse of what it's really like to be in Nebraska's true nature, which is only possible with these natural plants. So for my environmental engagement project, I got the opportunity to work with High Level Happiness to further their work on the tree BNB and turn it into a reality. The main needs were exposure to the project, funding, and research for future proposals. Firstly, the treehouse needs exposure and the community backing it in order to be successful. We were planning to get radio and TV interviews to promote the treehouse within the community, but with the coronavirus high crisis, our plans had to change and that aspect of the project had to be halted. My future recommendations to garner exposure for the tree BNB involve a Facebook page, community night, and taking advantage of promotional activities. Firstly, the tree BNB needs its own Facebook page. High Level Happiness already has a wonderful Facebook page, which they're very active on and are able to share articles with the community and updates 
and just kind of keep everyone involved and in understanding why this is such an important project. But the Tree BNB needs its own page so that it can share updates, pertinent information, and just to garner exposure and inform the general public of the absolute necessity of this treehouse. Further, I propose a community night, similar to ones that High Level Happiness has already put on, which would bring the community together doing something fun and also in support of this project as a way to raise funds and t tell people about it. Finally, I would suggest seeking out and taking advantage of any potential news and radio opportunities to talk about the treehouse. I strongly believe that if the community was made more aware of this project, there would be a lot of people backing it and it would really spread like wildfire and become a reality much quicker. As for funding, the treehouse will cost about $110,000 in total, not including additional fees for administration, promotional materials, and activities. The people working on this are all volunteers and they still have fees to pay and so that's another big cost that needs to be taken care of. Thus, I was entrusted with the task of identifying the best way to raise funds for this project. Similar projects have had success with crowdfunding due to the community aspect of the treehouse and the ability to get people invested. So for example, one GoFundMe page is for a tropical treehouse reconstruction similar to the aims of the Tree BNB and has raised over $8,000 from people in the community. I knew crowdfunding was the way to go, but I had to determine which platform to use. I consulted with marketing experts and decided a GoFundMe would be the best route to take due to the minimal fees and high visibility. Carolyn of High Level Happiness provided me with videos and a written description, which I took to a marketing team to have edited and perfected for the page. Once the page was finalized, we shared it with High Level Happiness partners, as well as with members of the community through social media. We had plans to send it out to university department heads and sustainable businesses throughout the community, but due to the coronavirus, we felt uncomfortable asking people for money. My only further recommendation is to continue with the GoFundMe after this virus blows over, connecting the page with as many people as possible. Finally, I was asked to compile some research for future proposals for the Treehouse on the topics of environmental justice, immersive nature experiences, and rewilding the urban environment. I found a number of suitable sources and really dove into the topic. After examining as many sources as I could, I compiled the information I found into a seven-page paper, which specifically considers environmental justice in terms of access to nature. The paper also looks at why people aren't going outside and why it is so imperative that they do and suggests ways to connect people with nature using things that have worked in the past for other communities. This research will be used in conjunction with further resources for future proposals of For the Treehouse. Going forward, not much can be done until the coronavirus crisis is over. However, I do not see that as a detriment. Throughout this whole ordeal, I have heard from so many people how going outside is the only thing keeping them sane. In this weird time, people are connecting with nature like never before. Because of this, I believe that when this is all over, people will have a stronger desire to get outside and to bring the outdoors to others. Therefore, high-level happiness needs a big push once this blows over. Firstly, we need to continue gaining exposure for the treehouse by creating a Facebook page, hosting community events, and taking advantage of as many promotional opportunities as possible. Perhaps most significantly, the GoFundMe needs to be heavily promoted and shared widely amongst the community, giving people an outlet to support a growing love of the outdoors. Finally, we need to continue sharing the importance of this treehouse and the positive benefits that it can have, which I believe is very aptly summed up in the research we have collected. People aren't getting outside due to a lack of time and unequal access, which is a huge problem. As nature is being rejected and destroyed, people need to foster a connection with it in order to truly want to care for it. Therefore, immersive nature experiences like these are absolutely necessary in order to bring people back outside. Through the creation of this tree BNB, High Level Happiness is going to inspire a love of nature in an entire generation of Lincolnites, bringing nature to the underserved and restore an entire city. This is my literature cited and includes all of the resources that I used for this specific PowerPoint. Thank you so much for listening.